my friend's horse has passed away due to colic. Yes. Is there anything new for colic in horses out there that can save their lives? Also, how far along are vets in research in finding more cures for colic? Um, this is quite close to home, not just because of my own horse, but we run the colic care program. So we're constantly looking, seeking out um, the newest and best advances, the research in colic. And, and I went ahead and went online again. And I found a great site. So there's a lot of American um, veterinary schools that are doing research in this area. It's very active. It's, it's getting funded. But there's a school in the UK, the University of Nottingham um, School of Veterinary Medicine and Science. They have something called the, um, the colleagestudy.com. You can actually go to and fill out a survey. And there's a button to click if you're a vet and a button to click if you're an owner and they ask you questions and they're trying to whittle down exactly what this person is asking. How can we not just prevent colic but save horses' lives once they are colicking? Mm -hmm. And the number one thing they're finding so far, they've published three papers um, so far, but they've got more in the works because it's an ongoing thing, is that early recognition early diagnosis and early referral mm. if it's a serious colic is important. So that that then depends on both the owner recognizing it and the veterinarian choosing the right battery of tests that will say this is a serious colic that might be surgical and needs to go right away or this is a medical colic that can stay at home and will do treatment at home and it'll be fine in an hour or two. So the, the things that, that make that help the vet make that decision are uh, pain. How painful is the horse and how well does the horse respond to painkillers? Mm -hmm. Heart rate, so a high heart rate, the higher the worse. Um, the absence of gut sounds and also two different parameters of blood volume and pressure, mm -hmm. which is the capillary refill time and the, the quality of the jugular pulse. Mm -hmm. So those are the five things that this research group has found helps the vet the most. So those are the things when the vet comes out, we'll be assessing in your horse. So based on those, sending the horse right away to the surgical facility will hopefully get them um, operate on sooner and save their life. When you talk about the horse owner, you know, recognizing things sooner in their horse, are there ways that people can get better at looking at that more critically? I know you talk about like journaling your horse's behavior and mm -hmm. vital signs and all that sort of stuff. Do you think that kind of thing would be helpful here in helping people really know what's normal for their horse? Um, a couple of things. I think it's important to know your own horse. Like I know in mine, the lip curling is one of the early early signs that he does. So even if I see nothing else, if his lip curls, then I begin to observe him much more closely. Mm -hmm. That's his telltale sign. Um, one of the things this group in the UK has done is how can we get across to more horse owners good information? So they're like, is it client events? Is it webinars? Is it uh, social media? You know, how do we get the word out? Because I think the AAEP has a very good list of things to watch for. So it's the, it's the pawing, it's the rolling, it's the sweating, not eating, that long list that we've shown before and we can send people to the website to see. Um, knowing all those and then knowing which in that list your horse does. Mm -hmm. So it's those two things. Okay.